Hello, and back with, I think, uh, bookshelf number, tour number six, uh, where we've, I'm allowed to stand up again and not kind of crunch myself down low. And we can continue with my tour of bookshelves, uh, starting out with uh, two kind of pretty classic ones. Uh, first one is science fiction classic, uh, Frank Herbert's Dune, uh, you know, a Senate planet of Arrakis. We have Paul Atreides and his father, his family, and his family coming there. It's all a trap. And uh, thus starts an amazing, amazing, um, might, might be a hero's adventure, at least in the first book is a hero's adventure, but kind of gets complicated as it goes along. I have to say, Dune itself is the one that I really stands out to me. Um, someone like Steve Donahue has made a case for uh, the, the, the continuing books, at least the Frank Herbert books, not the Sons books, uh, not the books that are written after that. That's part of a uh, Frank Herbert uh, corporation. Uh, but not actually the writer Frank Herbert himself. But uh, yes, I highly recommend, highly recommend Dune. And uh, the next one is a Scots Scots Queer by Graham Lewis Grassic Gibbon, a uh, great Scottish Scottish book uh, of the uh, kind of all written in the uh, kind of the turn of the turn of the nineteenth century, kind of leading up to I believe World War oh, is it World War One or World War Two. Uh, beautiful, beautiful kind of Scottish dialect. Um, gorgeously written books. Um, definitely one of these. Uh, if uh, if Dune is like one of my favorite science fiction books, then uh, this is just one of my favorite favorite book books. Well, Dune is also one of my favorite book books, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So, wow, great great way to start things off. Uh, we've got Lev Grossman, uh, The Magicians, um, which um, is a whole trilogy. Which I think the other ones are either I've done in ebook or whatever, but uh, Lev Grossman, uh, really good, cynical, sort of a grown-up Harry Potter going to college book would be the, the thing. Also kind of a savage examination of uh, C.S. Lewis's um, uh, Narnia series. Um, if, uh, if we'll probably at some point come along to, well, if they're not if they may not even actually be in this room, but the uh, the uh, the the uh, Golden Compass series um, is also maybe a reply to uh, C.S. Lewis. This is a, this is another one. Uh, uh, this is less maybe less theological, um, but uh, no less no less um, entertaining and 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 bitter bitterly entertaining at, at that. Um, David Gilmore. Uh, do I have any more David Gilmore here? I don't. Uh, this is back on Tuesday. Uh, I, oh, what the hell is it? There's the one David Gilmore, Perfect Night to Go to China, which is one of my, uh, is another beautiful kind of hushed book of a father who, uh, who loses his, loses his son, goes out for a drink or something like that, comes back and his son is, is gone. Like infant, not infant, but you know, toddlerish son. Uh, and I've, one of those guys are like, okay, I'll see if I can find another book of his that I actually, that I like. Uh, he's an art critic. He's been an art critic in Canada for the while. I remember seeing him on the national, uh, with a somewhat pretentious <laughs> delivery style. Uh, but he was, he was always engaging that way. And it was, uh, he perfect night to China is uh, definitely one, one keeper of a book. So maybe back on Tuesdays is, is, is one I should pick up at some point. Um, Newt Hampson, uh, Norwegian great translated by translation by Robert Bly. I think it's, I think it is from, from the, oh, I think it's great, great Norwegian. Of course we just have that. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think I got, came through him through, uh, Henry Miller, uh, definitely. Uh, and it was definitely, uh, someone, especially hunger is what kind of hard, hard scrabble, really, really hard scrabble life of, of trying this a, a novel. I'll just bad the blather if I try and do more on that. Um, we have Arnon Grunberg, uh, which I probably started off with uh, his Blue Monday, Blue Monday, um, but went on to uh, Silent Extras and uh, the Jewish Messiah. Arnon Grunberg is a is a troublemaker <laughs> and he, somebody who 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 writes about the very awkward, embarrassing things of life, uh, in, in that way that, uh, European mid kind of middle, the uh, middle of Europe country fellows can only write, uh, Dutch, I think can't remember. I probably would say on the back, 
but yes, you know, you have something like a Jew, the Jewish mes, mes, Messiah, um, you know, awkward, very awkward, but really entertaining, aren't entertaining, difficult, difficult fellow, uh, a little bit more, uh, Newt Hampson, uh, Again, one of these guys I've kind of held on to, but will I continue with his books? I don't know. Uh, Nicola, Nicola Griffith, whose Hild I love, and I might even have a copy of it somewhere down below. This is thing. This is uh, one of her, I think it's her, um, this is winner of the Lambda and Tripti Award. So I think it's, it's her in science fiction land, which uh, I should really get back to. It's got a quote from Ursula K. Le Guin on the front. Um change or die, the only options available to the Darulian company owned by the planet C C GP. The planet's deadly virus has killed most of the original colonists and changed the rest irre irrevocably. Centuries after the colony has lost touch with the rest of humanity, the company returns to exploit GP, and its forces found themselves fighting for the lives. Afraid of spreading the virus, the company had left its remaining employees in place, afraid and isolated from the natives. So, yes, I'll have to, have to read that because I really enjoyed her Hild. I'm not surprised someone whose science fiction would make good in, in, in the sensible land. Uh, Patricia Highsmith, uh, the talented Mr. Ripley. Uh, really, um, uh, Patricia Highsmith, I've read, I read uh, Strangers on a Train just recently. And she's such, such one of the very kind of casting a very cold, cold eye on, on our world. Uh, kind of, uh, kind of the 50s, 60s. Um, Ripley being the chameleon, chameleon sociopath, kind of working his way through the world, getting whatever he wants in whatever ma manner he can. Um, yeah, yeah, really, really good stuff. Uh, oh, more, I think Elizabeth, okay, there's Elizabeth Bear and then there's Elizabeth Hand, and then I get the Elizabeths um, mixed up. Haven't read it. At some point, maybe I will. I would have to look at the back of it. Peter F. Hamilton, who writes giant books. So I picked up two of them, but I think they're both in, is this, they're, they're either in series or like, are they the right one? I've never found my kind of grasping point of getting into, of getting into Peter Hamilton. So we'll see if I, if I do at some point. And you know what? I'm going to stop there because then we're going to hit, hit the large swath of Robert E. Heinlein and Robert E. Howard's. And uh, my arm is getting tired already and I'm going to have to go to work. So let's stop there.